Hi guys, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We're going to do two example problems for you on partial derivatives. So this is a Calculus 2 topic. And partial derivatives actually will come up a lot in different uh, applications in engineering and in civil engineering. So they're not hard, but, um, you know, this is just a couple examples. After these two, you should know how to do it. So let's take a look at the first one. So we have a polynomial function here of x and y. Okay, so multivariable polynomial function. And it says let f of x and y, you know, equal x to the fourth plus x cubed, blah, blah, blah. Find uh, f sub x, f sub y, and compute f sub x, one of uh, x equals 1 and y equals 2, etc. So a um, couple things to note here. This is a notation for the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And how do you take a partial derivative? Well, um, by this point, you should, should know what, how to take a derivative generally. And this is exactly the same thing, except uh, when we take the partial derivative of, for example, x, in this case here, so f of f sub x, okay, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, uh, we're going to consider x only as a variable, and every other variable is going to be in the equation other than x, we're going to consider it to be constant. Okay, and you'll just treat it as if it was just a number, for example. So uh, let's take a look here. So we have x to the fourth, we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x, okay? So we need to apply the power rule here. Okay, so we're going to bring down 4 to the front, right? We have 4 times x, and then to the n minus 1. So that's going to be 4 minus 1 to the power of 3. And now what do we do here? Well, considering, uh, considering what I said earlier, that any variable that's not x is considered a constant. In this case, y is considered a constant, y to the 5, so it just stays as y to the 5. And we perform the operation on x to the 3, uh, the, deriv the derivation of x to the 3. So that's going to be 3x squared, right? Uh, bring the exponent, uh, exponent down, and then n minus 1 to the exponent, so we're going to have 3x squared. And uh, y to the 5th is just going to stay the same, okay? Because we're just going to treat it as a constant. Perfect. And, well, what happens to a constant when we take the derivative of it with respect to anything? It ends up being zero. Okay. Very good. So, now that we have the hang of that, let's do the next one, f uh, sub y, or the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Now, in this case, we're going to consider that y is the variable and x is the constant. So, x to the fourth is a constant. That's zero. Um, and then we have this term here. So, we're going to do the derivative of y to the fifth. So, we have 5y to the fourth. And x cubed stays the same because we're considering a constant. And same with here, we're going to have 10y. So what else does the question ask? It asks us to compute the partial derivative at a point. Okay, so we can do that. Let's just go over here and take care of that. So we're going to have f of 1, x, 1, 2. And all you do here is just plug in. Okay, so x equals 1. It's going to be 1 cubed plus 3, 1 squared times, uh, what is y here? It's 2 to the 5. And what is that equal to? Well, you just go ahead and uh, calculate that out. Make sure you don't make any mistakes. And that all that there is equal to 100. Perfect. What's f? Uh, f sub y, or the partial derivative of y, we're going to... And they want that evaluated at 0 and 1. So we have 5. And as we know here, this is going to be 1 to the 4th and 0 to the 3. So this term is just 0 minus 10. And what's our y value? That's 1. Okay. And we're left with negative 10. Perfect. Nice and simple. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question down here. Now, we have a, a little bit of maybe a trickier question, but this one's really simple too. But this is just to give you like a really nice introduction into partial derivatives if you've never seen them before and you're getting a little bit confused. So we have a three-variable function of x, y, and z, and it's e to the power of x times y times ln z. And uh, we're asked to find the partial derivatives, and this introduces you again to the different notation that I mentioned before. Um, so you have df by dx, or partial f by partial x. So let's go ahead and let's start with df by dx, okay? And we're going to consider x the variable, and we're going to consider y and z to be constants now, okay? So this instead, we have three variables instead of two. It's exactly the same thing. Anything that's not x is considered a constant. So we have e to the x, y, all right? And we're going to use the chain rule here, right? So e, the derivative of e to the x is uh, well, e to the x, right? Times the derivative of the inner function, right? So the derivative of x, y. So we have e to the xy, okay, that stays the same. Okay, we're going to go ahead and multiply by the inner function, the derivative of the inner function with respect to x. Okay, so uh, this with respect to x, the x turns into 1, y is constant, so it's just going to be times y. Okay, and that is just going to be times ln z, because ln z is a constant, okay? So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's the answer there. Let's take a look at df by dy. 
So df by dy, uh, we're going to do exactly the same thing pretty much, except uh, the only thing that's going to change is when we apply the, the chain rule to e to the xy, uh, this, this value is going to change, or this, this, uh, this is going to change from y to x, right? Because we have the derivative of e to the xy is e to the xy times the derivative with respect to y of this function here, x times y, and that's just going to be y is going to become 1, and we have times x times ln z because ln z is a constant. And finally, let's do df by dz. Okay. So um, as we can see here, okay, we have a function of z here. So let's start with that. So the derivative of ln z is 1 over z, uh, z, right? And we have e to the xy. e to the xy is just a constant. And therefore, it's, and it's a product times ln z. So that's just going to stay like this. So that is going to be equal to e to the x, y over z. Perfect. Okay, cool. So that's a really quick question for you on partial derivatives. Nothing really too tricky. Hope you enjoyed it and like and subscribe.